Good afternoon. We're going to call this school board meeting to order uh, Tuesday, October the 15th, 2024 at 3.30 p.m. by satellite time per <laughs> Superintendent Sir. <laughs> our Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Mr. Phil Leary and our invocation will be given by Pastor Aaron Wells. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I am new to the area, that's why most of you don't recognize me. Uh, we just moved here from Virginia about three weeks ago. And when we lived in Virginia, it was uh, a joy to work really closely with the school system, uh, doing things to support the schools and support the students. So thank you very much for letting me come this uh, afternoon uh, to be with you all. Um, and I just wanted to offer a blessing over the proceedings that happen here, uh, that God would give you wisdom. And the, the best thing I could think to do is give the actual direct quote that God gives to, um, as a blessing for his people. So this is from Numbers. Uh, I just want to read this over you and then pray over the proceedings that are going to happen here today, that God would give you wisdom, discernment, courage, and unity as you work together for the good of our students. Uh, so this is Numbers 6, 24. It says, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. So God, we ask this afternoon, God, that you would give uh, these people here wisdom. Give them courage. Give them discernment, God. Help them to work together in a spirit of unity for the good of the students and the families in this county, Lord God. That you would just give them wisdom and grace as they deal with each other, as they tackle issues, as they hear concerns, as they put policies and changes into place, Lord God. That you would just cover everything that happens here with your wisdom and that we would feel your peace as we work. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much you. and welcome to the area. Thank you. Alrighty. Uh, what part of Virginia? Uh, in Middlesex County. Middlesex County. I'm familiar with the Eastern Shore. We'll talk later. All right. <laughs> so what do you think about our hurricanes here in Florida? I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Alrighty, we are now ready to conduct the business of the board. We're going to start with Mrs. Whitehurst with the retiree recognition, then project praise updates from Mrs. Ashley McCoo and Mr. Nathan Eddins, uh, and the HCA teacher spotlight in that order. Thank okay. you. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Good afternoon, yes. board. Right. Sorry, I'm I'm going to go ahead and be able to present today, but to a wonderful woman, retiring this time, um, but Miss Whitehurst is presenting in Seattle, Washington, so I'm going to do this for her presence. This is one of our wonderful gifts that we can go ahead and do in HR is to recognize our wonderful retirees and congratulate them and on their next chapter. So today I would like to recognize Miss Jackie Williams. She is retiring with 27 years and six months in the transportation department. So if you wanna come on up here, Jack. Bus drivers are our eyes and ears. There. They see it all. Congratulations. Yeah. Miss Jackie, you Come on, Jackie. Come on, Miss Jackie. Best of luck to you and peace. God bless you. And you can come back whenever you want. Thank you, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, board, and 
with Mr. Holmes, Dr. Serency. So um, I'm proud to be here today. I'm Ashley McCool and I'm super excited to be here representing our Department of Federal Programs today. And with me, I have Nathan Eddins. Nathan has been with Federal Programs for four years, coming from Interlochen High School, where he was a teacher. Um, he oversees our federal program that manages the Title IX Part A, which is the McKinney Vento, Vento program for all of our students who are um, designated as homeless. So he's going to give you a, just a brief overview of that if you're not familiar with that or any of our guests are not familiar with that. And this specifically because the giving season is upon us, he does a lot of work to make sure that these students um, have a great Christmas every year. And so he's going to share a little bit about that work and how anyone in the audience you guys or folks you may know um, who might be viewing online would like to help us with that so thank you thank y'all for letting me be here <clears throat> so I do want to give just a quick overview of um, my program so like Ashley said McKinney Vento is the federal law but we call our particular program project praise here in Putnam County so uh, um, if you're looking at a slide over there, you'll see some of the qualifications that uh, uh, allow a student to be recognized as part of pro Project Praise. The reason why I pulled this up and I wanted to show it to you is because usually when we think of the definition of homeless, we have a, a little more narrow view of homelessness. We think of it only as those living on street benches or, or in the woods or whatever. And that is part of the thing. But as you can see there, uh, other things that would qualify is those that are living in a hotel or motel if it is um, due to a hardship. So if you own the hotel and you're living there because that's your business that doesn't count but if you're there as a temporary due to house fire flooding hurricanes any of that kind of stuff then you would qualify um, substandard housing is our fastest growing area we're having more and more people moving into sheds and tents and stuff as uh, housing prices are going up and up as y'all are all aware um, and then um, we have emergency shelters and transition shelters, which, of course, in Putnam County, there's only the domestic violence shelter and then um, interface um, that qualify for those. And then I left off the top one on purpose because it's actually our largest group of about 70 percent of our students fall underneath the top one, which is called doubled up. And that's our, our families that are living with other people due to some kind of hardship. Again, it can be a hurricane, it can be a flood, it can be what a uh, house fire, whatever the case is, they're living with people because they cannot find adequate housing otherwise. Um, so um, what our program is able to do with Project Praise is uh, the, one of the biggest pushes that they want done is immediate enrollment for these students. And that does a couple of things. That one, it gives the student stability in a otherwise uncertain time it gives them meals and guaranteed meals and, and all that kind of stuff it also helps us to uh, uh, put eyes on kids that might be uh, being moved around illegally and so forth so we're able to get them enrolled immediately we're able to get them identified um, through the program we're able to provide uh, <coughs> school of origin transportation that uh, allows them to go to the school that they were in when they um, became homeless or ex begin to experience homelessness through the program, either through donations or through grants, uh, temporary grants of different kinds, we're able to write and uh, we're able to get school supplies, hygiene uh, supplies, clothing, those kind of things. Um, another thing I'm able to do with a project is uh, what's called um, unaccompanied homeless youth, which are uh, students that are 16 or older that are not with a legal guardian and we're able to help them get paperwork that they need to be able to function um, that uh, oftentimes you have to have a parent to do. I'm able to sign and, and help them get those kind of things. So that's just a quick overview. Um, one of the biggest things that my program is able to do is to provide tutoring in school hours for these students. Uh, this is a big deal because obviously these students oftentimes don't have good transportation um, and so being able to um, meet them in school and being able to to help them at, at uh we're able to meet them there and, and help them get on track for schooling i listed there you can look at the schools um that we're able to do right now i have two tutors uh paraprofessionals that are able to go to a different school each day and so we're able to cover cover all of the elementary schools um, the tutors help not only remove barriers for students but they also help um, kind of 
uh, they're kind of boots on the ground that helps me see what's going on in schools and, and kids that might need help that I, I might miss just visiting on an um, inconsistent basis. So um, they are a big part of our program. Um, so I just wanted to give them a quick shout out. So as Ashley said, uh, one of the things I wanted to kind of mention today is this time of year, we come to what we call Project Praise Christmas. And the way Project Praise Christmas works is if you look at the picture on the far uh, left over there, it's kind of a wish list. And what the do students do is w we give these wish lists. The guidance counselors meet with the students that are in our program at the time. They kind of fill out this wish list, and they just tell us what they want. And we take that wish list. I take all identifying information off of that list and assign it a number. And then I pass out those wish lists to uh, donors who come along beside us and uh, they spend the whole month of November buying gifts um, for the student. And then they, uh, once they got them bought, then we go and collect them. And that's that middle picture. That's me going and collecting. I believe that one was from the uh, college. Um, my big three donors that have supported every single year that I've been a part of it is uh, St. John State College, the hospital, I think, that what is it, HCA now? Um, and then uh, First Coast um, Credit Union have they have through the years have consistently um, covered over 115 students just those three donors so they're my biggest section um, so we go we pick up the gifts from them and then we take them and we put all the gifts into red kids call them Santa bags they're actually laundry bags so they can actually have a purpose after Christmas is over with um, so, and we put them in those bags and we take them back to the schools and the schools then the parents come in are able to pick it up. Um, so with that, um, last year we, uh, last year we qualified or we were able, um, to sponsor 280 kids. Now we did have a little hiccup last year. So we had sponsors for 230. And then we winded up with 280 students. Um, I made some frantic calls and some great people in this community stepped up and we were able to not only get every single kid covered, but we actually had extra and we was able to use to help some, a family who had a house fire and some <clears> different <throat> things like that. So I just want to give a shout out to all the sponsors, the individuals, those that stepped up. Um, one particular lady really stepped up and helped a lot um, just meeting those needs. So this year, we're hoping to cover 288. We have 288 in the program right now that could use Christmas. Um, so that's our goal this year. So if you want to be a sponsor, I would love to talk to you. Um, so that's my contact information there if you're interested and in, in helping in any way. To close out my talking part, I'd like to share a, just a very simple story. So two years ago, I think it was two years ago now, um, I received a phone call about a family that had had a house fire. It's a mom and two kids, a kindergartner and a first grader. And so I called the mom and of course she was upset. She had just lost everything in a house fire. And it was way past our cutoff date. We tried, we, like I said, we tried to have the list to the donors by November 1st. So it was way past that. It was after Thanksgiving. But as I talked to her, I just, I told her I'd find sponsors. Somewhere I'd find sponsors we would cover. I said, it wouldn't be much but we'll cover it one way or the other. And the mom, through tears, told me, you don't understand. You kept Santa alive one more year for my kids. So that's why we find this to be a great thing to be able to do for our community. So I thank you with that. And with that, I just want to say again, thank you all for y'all's time. Nathan, could I? Yes, sir. Could I, other than telling you how much, how, how important that this really is that you keep up with this information um how are uh, are you having any trouble identifying some of the kids in all these massive rural subdivisions in the west and south end that are living in these tool sheds do you have a, a, a it, process that you're being able to find because I, I see a lot of them and i feel like are being move from one place right. to the next so know, it, it is very difficult for a couple reasons one families like to hide that information because they're scared of dcf getting involved mm. and so they they don't like to admit it um so one of the things we try to do is is break that stigma and let them know we're here to help them to keep dcf from getting involved not
to call DCF on them. So that's one of the things that we do. But as far as being able to identify them, the tutors have been a big help because they're in the schools. And so as we are able to meet clothing needs or hygiene needs, students are like, wait a minute, how did you get that? Um, and so then they're able to talk and, and the kids, as y'all have all been in education, y'all know, uh, kids will start talking to you when they trust you. Well, and the counselors and, and the counselor, role that they play, whether it's, whether it's a child being physically abused or sexually abused, it, it's out there. Right. And it's not just Putnam County, it's everywhere. A absolutely. I just would like Ashley and you to let us know what we as a board through the superintendent can do to, to try to I help appreciate that. Anything we can do. Did y'all have anything else for? I'm good. I appreciate y'all. Thank you, Nate. Thank, thank you. you. Ashley, thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, board. I'd like to invite the foundation and HCA up, please. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. And I'd like to start by saying thank you, Madam Chair, and the, the board and the students and teachers, everybody for this opportunity to approach you today. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Les Sims and I'm here to represent the Education Foundation of Putnam County. We're here today to talk about a special teacher we have um, in the room with us today. Um, last year, um, HCA reached out to us and said, look, we want to help out with uh, some of these teachers and recognize them what they do. And so they obligated $2,500 and uh, every month we're going to come up here and uh, reward another teacher. For those of you who do not know, this these teachers are graded through some sort of rubric through the principals at each school. So it doesn't go through the Education Foundation. We're just a, 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 a partner with HCA. So um, not to waste any more of your time, I'd like to say thank you to everybody. And I'd like to introduce James Perez. He's the Vice President of Human Resources for HCA Florida. So if you'd like to say a few things. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, being the Vice President of HR at the hospital, uh, we do have a lot of employees that grew up here in Putnam County, went to school here in Putnam County. So for us to be a part of this uh, uh, presentation is, is wonderful because if it's not for the teachers uh, and the students that, that go through the system, you know, us as an employer would be, would be hurting. So it's really, we really do appreciate this opportunity. And as a former teacher myself, I see the value, great value in this. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, <laughs> so this month's teacher is from Interlochen Junior Senior High School and her name is Jordan Craig. Jordan's principal wrote about her that she exemplifies the characteristics of the portrait of a graduate. She is an engaged collaborator who attends and contributes to all district and school-based science professional learning communities. She models best teaching practices at school-based PLCs and is always willing to support her colleagues with whatever they need. Jordan is also an innovative problem solver, fearless learner, and a resilient individual. Last year, she embraced the implementation of the Ducks uh, Unlimited curriculum for her environmental science class and celebrated her students' success on the certification exams. Jordan is also a confident communicator. When she has questions or concerns, she doesn't mind speaking up and will work diligently to ensure students get what they need. She also practices global citizenship. She partic participates in community events and attends sporting and club events. Jordan has recently begun pursuing her master's degree in educational leadership. Interlochen Junior Senior High School is proud to have her as a recipient of the HCA Teacher of the Month. Congratulations, Jordan. Amber. Thank you. 
Sandy used to be at Melrose. Did I that right? No, she was Price Middle School. That's what Jacob. My, my, oldest, years. my oldest son knew her name and I saw her campaign sign. He said, He's my principal. And he went, Not at Melrose. And he went to Price. <laughs> Somebody's getting old. <laughs> one of my students at Price. <laughs> And again, congratulations. And it's just awesome to see how this community comes together and connects hospital, uh, project praise, uh, our teachers, everything. It's just, it just all works together for good. I'll leave it at that. Hey, at this time, did we receive any uh, requests for public comments? All right, having none, we are now ready for the public hearing. Item number one, adopt. New policy, uh, Putnam County School District therapy dog. You gonna do roll call? Uh, how you wanna do this? If you ask, okay. yes, ma'am, I will. Okay. Um. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we adopt item D one. Or we we are voting on this. Yes, yes, ma'am. Um, You're right. The new policy regarding the therapy dogs. I'll second. make a. I'll second it. It's been motioned by Mrs. Holly Pickens that we adopt item D1, the policy regarding our therapy dog, and second by Mr. David Buckles. Uh, are we ready to vote? All right. District 1? Yes. District 2? Adopt. District 3? Adopt. District 4? Adopt. District 5? Adopt. Okay. Unanimous. Hmm. Okay. We are now ready for our consent agenda. Um, we will start with you, Mr. Leary. Madam Chairman, I am good. have nothing to pull. Thank you. Mrs. Wagner? I have nothing to pull either. Mr. Buckles? I spent some time with the superintendent, and he educated me on quite a few things, but uh, other than the agenda thing, <laughs> which was about time, you know. It's been a long time since I was in kindergarten, and Sandy was my <laughs> teacher, so... <laughs> Any, anyway, uh, he teed you for that. Yeah, I have good. I have nothing right. to pull. And the question is, did, did you master what he taught? Yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Buckle. Mrs. Pickens. Well, I was going to pull H1, but it's all completed. Now we have the information. When I originally looked, it was incomplete, okay. but it's all complete. It. So I'm Great. good. All righty. And I have nothing to pull. Madam Chair, I'll move approval Wait. of the consent agenda in, in its entirety. Second. Motion by Mr. Phil Leary that we uh, accept the consent agenda in its entirety and second by Mrs. Holly Pickens. Are we ready to vote? All in favor, let it be known by aye. 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 Unanimous. We are now out of regular session into emergency session. Good afternoon, board. On your emergency item, you have a proposed new calendar that allows us to have our makeup time for Hurricane um, Helene and um, Milton. Milton. Thank you. I was like, Michael? No, no, Milton. <laughs> um, just to give you a little bit of update, um, we work under the Florida statute 1101.60 that we have 180 teacher days. That's what our calendar normally has. But there's also a caveat in there or the equal number uh, and the equal number of hourly num hourly um, requirements. So state board rule 6A 1.045111 states that the 180 day requirement is really 720 net hours for K to 3 and 900 net instructional hours for 4 to 12. And so using those factors of the 900 or the 720, uh, we were able to add, we have enough instructional time that we were able to not have to come six additional days. We took the calendar and we pushed the semester back a little bit and between by, by pushing that semester back a few days we're able to capture the right number of hours in each semester the semesters were a little uneven to begin with because we tried to finish as part of the board's wishes to finish the semester before we go to, uh, to winter break but this time we will come back and finish the semester after winter break 
Um, the one other piece that is a caveat to us is those classes that have credit bearing um, courses, high school 9 through 12, they must have either 130 hours for a year long or 67.5 hours for a semester long. So that is really where the, that the it, we have to dig into some of the classes and changing the bell schedules a little bit, but we have worked that out where we are able to present that calendar to you with not having to take away the days in Thanksgiving, unless we have another storm, then we have to rework it again. Um, but we will lose the um, early release day in October <coughs> for everyone. Today, everybody came back early for, we took the in-service day and made it a student day. And that will be what we need to do to make up for all schools except for QI. QI in December will have to give up their early release day as well. They have a power hour, so it, it um, affects the number of minutes in the class. So they'll have to go an extra day, that a half, uh, two extra hours. All right, are there any questions about the calendar? No. no. All right, yes. Mr. Leary has a point. So, yeah, you, you have um, allowed for, in case we do have another storm, that there would be, I heard, I heard on NPR today that one of the school districts, or I guess two or three of them in Southwest Florida actually are gonna use that Friday after Thanksgiving, and I don't wanna be shot anywhere I go in Palaka, so uh, <laughs> I'm, don't, whatever we do, let's don't use that day. <laughs> we do, our students go to school, um, a few more minutes every day than most of the districts around us. Uh, that's that shortened um, planning time that's embedded in the day, allows our students to be at school longer, and our staff gets their planning during the day while the students are there instead of before or after. So our students already go to school way greater than the number of hours required without a hurricane. So we keep within those standards. Now, if we have another hurricane, we will have to adjust again. But right now, we were able to keep whole by keeping Thanksgiving still that week off for everybody gotcha. by making the adjustments we made. Did this affect like block scheduling? It did. This week is an this week goes um, a straight seven. So the parents were notified by the schools that this week is an eight, but we call them A days. So it means that they go to all seven periods this whole week. That helps us recalculate a couple of those um, hours too. Minutes. And they'll go back. To they'll go back to block scheduling. And on the early release days, um, certain schools like Palaka High School and QI will need to run a special bell just to collect those right numbers so that they can have each period have the right amount. So they'll run a special bell on those two days, on those days. It's actually not unusual, I mean, to, to have to, to make up the days and they're, they're built in and I, I'm, hats off to the instructional team and the superintendent for getting this where we can do it like this so um, well, I really cool. want to thank Stacy Owens upstairs and Renee Huff's department she has done many 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 calculations and working with the principals to create those new schedules for those early release days to make sure that we are correct in our minutes so if we get audited we have the correct minutes within those semesters and I think that would be a lot more palatable because nobody wanted to give up their Thanksgiving holiday to come in and make those up. And right. you know, I'm sure that will be a lot of people out of town anyway. So thank you all for all you did on that. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And would thank you for keep. Oh, excuse me. Would Go there ahead. be, sorry. Mm -mm. Would there be, um, would the governor, hasn't he in the past occasionally forgiven a day? No. They wrote into statute a while back that it, that you they, they changed the 180 or the equivalent hours. Okay. So they did that a while back so you didn't have to request waivers for the day. But even, even when we requested waivers, they never gave up the hours. You still had to sit for the same amount of hours. So they've done away with us having to request less than 180 days by creating that or the equivalent hours. Um, but we must have the hours. And they do not usually, in fact, we've gotten a memo that says that they are not proposing to um, relieve any hours. Madam Chair, can I have one thing? I know I communicated with, go ahead. Oh, okay, I was gonna say Mr. Leary, ahead, and then yeah. you may go. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Okay. Leary, I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah, because the governor and DOE, you know, created a problem for us with, you know, calling school off that Tuesday, and it was the most beautiful day that we've had in, in weeks. Um, Ironically, Orange County and the counties that were really impacted and that saw, uh, you know, had interstates were not closed. I, I, 
I just was flabbergasted at that, and so um, and disappointed because you know it puts more stress on our staff and you know the kids in general. So anyway, um, I, I'm hoping that maybe we can get you know hopefully we don't have to, but that they can get their timing down a little better um, in the future. I understood you know in general his um, his reasoning, but. Um, you know, I don't, you know, because Putnam County didn't have any interstates and people aren't really traveling through here that much. I didn't, I just couldn't connect the dots on that one. Well, and I actually wanted to, I'm glad you brought that up because I, I did want to comment on that because uh, I was at a meeting in Orlando. I got a call that afternoon, Monday, from the commissioner's office to that we need to cancel school. I mean, they were asking and they gave the reasons were people were trying to leave and I mean, I'm like you, I, I wasn't sure how many people we were going to get from either interstate, but we got to talking about it in our group here. And, you know, probably we probably had a number of people from here that might have, may have wanted to leave. So we didn't want to hinder to that either. So, but again, that was one of the days. And I just want to publicly say, I want to thank everybody for their flexibility because I know we had to do some quick messaging. I mean, we actually met uh, virtually I was in Orlando, we had to meet and come up with a quick game plan to get the message out for the next day. So I just appreciate everybody acting so quickly to make that happen. But I think not only uh, was it the people trying to leave the state, but we didn't want to impact our people here who might have wanted to try to leave too. So, And, and the district, your, your staff and, and uh, the first responders, the, the entire group uh, to be commended. For, for your actions, your efforts, your uh, foresight. I understand about not wanting to close, but when you ask from someone that is your supervisor, superior, if you will, uh, say to you, we want to use, you know, close. We were one of seven whatever. districts yeah. who were not closed on Tuesday that they asked to close. And, so and, I, and when you asked. If I'm not sure what the, who the other districts were, but. Yeah. All right, but, but again, I just want to commend you and uh, Mrs. Whitehurst and the entire team had people you were contacting. And it was just great because you didn't leave anybody out of the loop. Even my nieces, they were getting text messages because they had children in the school. And so, so you did a great, uh, a great effort, a great job, uh, a concerted effort, and everybody worked together. And, and this final hopefully the final, that we won't have another hiccup. Uh, we fared well uh, compared to others with Milton and uh -huh. Helene, um, but we 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 just thankful that you all were able to come together and make it so that the people won't have to, as the superintendent said, because some have already made arrangements for Thanksgiving and, and, and other holidays. So we thank you all again, as was said earlier, for your efforts. I, I do want to correct one thing. When we come back from Christmas break, that week will also be a straight seven week. Okay. Sorry, there are two weeks we needed to fix for that. And we are in the process there um, during this, um, these two hurricanes that actually has straddled our FTE um, reporting. And we are working on trying to find alternate times to report for FTE, the state is even thinking about having another opportunity for a different window. There's a lot of things that were impacted, ESE meetings that <coughs> impact your FTE. So we're working through those things now to try to get us the best optimal result at the end. Okay. Again, thank you all so much. Thank you. Madam Chairman, if you take a motion, I'll move that we approve uh, emergency item L1, the adjustment to the academic calendar. Second. Four twenty four twenty five. Okay. Mr. Phil Leary made the motion that we accept the adjustment made to our academic calendar by Mrs. Laura France. Uh, and it was second by Mrs. Linda Wagner. Any further comments or questions? All right, are we ready to vote? All in favor, let it be known by aye. 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 Unanimous. We are now out of emergency session. We don't all right, we don't have, yes we do, we have unfinished business, no new business, but unfinished business, the group life insurance agreement. Um, now. We did have, uh, Mr. Holmes did review that, if you recall, we put that off and Take. I don't yes, know if you sir. have anything you wanna 
say about that? My, uh, my only statement would be I had um, sent a suggested motion uh, if the board chooses to move forward with this. What you'd actually be doing is you'd be voting to make an application with the Symmetra Group um, for uh, their benefit and uh, uh, insurance program. They would then consider that application and assuming they accepted it, they would actually provide a contract to be entered in. Um, so the motion that you would make should you choose to go forward would be that you would move to that the, that the district submit an application to Symmetra um, for benefits uh, and insurance in accord with their September 3, 2024 response to your request for proposals. So you're, you're basically, you had an RFP out. You had five, as I recall, uh, submissions. Uh, the insurance committee recommended the one the proposal by Symmetra, there are details in, the, in, in your uh, board docs as to the five responses, and the insurance committee recommended that you go with the Symmetra proposal. So what you'd be doing right now is you'd be voting to submit an application for the benefits in accord with uh, the fees and, and insurance set forth in their proposal, the Symmetra proposal. Okay. And and then for clarification from that application, Symmetra would then get it, look at it, and either decide to insure us or not. I would imagine that unless something unforeseen comes up, they're planning on, on responding and, and accepting your application. But for clarification, they indicated that was the process that they worked through. They don't present a contract now to you. Instead, they ask for your application and then um, once they've accepted that application, they would submit the contract at that point. And then we look at the contract and then vote on the contract. The contract would, would be, we all assume it's going to be consistent with their response to your request for proposals. Okay. But it then still will come to the okay. board and yes. we will vote. Okay. All right. I'm good. Well, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we, based on our attorney's uh, advice, uh, submit our request to, to uh, you know for the insurance and uh, that it comes back to the attorney and he will apprise us if if everything is in line and lines up in the way the manner he feels comfortable uh, in our representation of the matter okay. and if I needed to add some wording Don you have to help me there I think that's the gist of it you're okay you're, you're, you're voting to submit an application for you. the for the insurance and benefits that they propose that's correct. Okay. Second. All right. It's been motioned by Mr. David Buckles that we accept, uh, well, that we submit, sorry, that we submit an application to uh, Symmetra for the insurance coverage, and then we will move at that point based on the advice that will be given to us from our attorney, and it was seconded by Mr. Theo Leary. All right. Floor open for discussion. Any questions, comments? If not, are we... Uh, again, my concern is just that that this can all get done before we need to do the registrations for our insurance. Yeah. Uh, or do if if it does take time, then do we offer it? Anybody on the insurance committee, Andy? Can you address that? Andy Burnett, insurance chair. Uh, yes, ma'am, Miss Pickens, I do understand your concerns. We, we will still have time. Um, we have our next insurance meeting on the 24th of this month where we'll look at their contract again. It will be back to us, and we'll also look at our insurance recommendation for 2025. Um, we've already started doing some work with, with the semester with the idea that that's what's going to happen for open enrollment, and we're looking at 11, 18 to 12 six for open enrollment right now that's the plan with the also administrative enrollment that's just to clear up any inconsistencies that took place in the open enrollment from 12 9 to 12 11 and then on 12 20 we'll submit data all that data from the open enrollment to payroll so the uh, deductions can be taken out of the employee checks so that's the plan right now we have enough time to do okay. it all right okay this is picking. thank you that's yes, all right any further questions all right, hearing none, are we ready to vote? All in favor, let it be known by aye. 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 Opposes? Hearing none, unanimous. 
Okay. We are now ready for our reports from our board members. We'll start with you, Mrs. Pickens. Okay, thank you. Um, again, I just want to reiterate what um, Ms. Gilliard said in regards to our, our response and action in the hurricanes with the, the joint effort of, of so many um, different groups and thank our administrators for going above and beyond and our district staff. Um, I know there were many people that really appreciated it. Um, I'd like to give, last night I was at Palaka High School, junior, senior high school, um, at the middle school volleyball tournament and a real treat, um, Mr. Bush had asked if the band would come and play. And so a band in a gym <laughs> sounds really, really, really good. But they came and they played the national anthem um, and then I believe it was Palaka's fight song and it was so cool for middle school girls to have that kind of attention and two groups really working together. I, Mr. Buckles was there. I thought it was amazing and I just want to um, say thank you to their band director. I think his name is Eric Stewart. Is that correct? I believe that's correct. Um, anyway, it was, it was, it was great and was very appreciated. I was appreciating at the game, by the way. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. Don't, don't let that out. Um, and um, also, I'd like to um, give a shout out to Oscar Jaimez, the teacher of the year at Crescent City Junior Senior High School. Oscar was a former student of mine. He's a graduate of the Paris de Pros, um, now called Grow Your Own. Um, but he was an original member of that group. And I cannot tell you how proud I am of him and what a just a fabulous young man and what a difference he's made in his community and his school. Um, and Latina Hardy was our support associate of the year at Crescent City Junior Senior High School. And she too has just, she was a, you know, she's a Crescent Cityan and um, she's just given back completely to her, her community and her school. Um, I'd like to congratulate the Raider football team on becoming the district champs last night with their victory. I, I believe this could have been, last night was maybe their third Monday night game. Um, you know, the Hurricanes have played havoc on, on every, um, you know, sporting uh, group. Um, Crescent City and Palaka play this Friday night. It will be Crescent City's homecoming because um, last Friday was supposed to be their homecoming. Um, and, you know, just it's amazing to see how our administration just adapts to things that are thrown at them from all kinds of different situations. And our kids adapt to it too. And I think that that's a great thing. Um, one more thing. Um, I received an invitation to the Veterans Memorial Ceremony at Crescent City Junior Senior High School. It's put on by the Army JROTC <coughs> Color Guard and the band at Crescent City. Miss Gilliard came last year. It's an absolutely wonderful, very respectful event for our veterans. It will be a highlight of your day if you can make time to come Friday, November 8th from 1015 to 1115 and that's they're very strict on that time because lunches have to you know get served and classes get in there but I, I know you will agree every year um, Master Sergeant Pellahatch puts another element into it and last year they gave a rose to every and saluted every member in the stands you know that was a, a veteran yes. so I really would like to see us promote this as much as we can because they they work so hard on it and really it's not super well attended so just I'll, I'll mention it again because we have another board meeting November 5th and I'll mention it again um, also just lastly um, Miss Jackie as a coach, you know, that having that bus ready and getting your children there and, you know, she was absolutely amazing. And every bus situation, she knows the south end of this county and its roads and its homes. And 
I did see Mr. Bowling said she has six months off and then she was going to come back. And I, I hope for the South End that that's exactly true. So hopefully you can talk her into that. Um, she's an amazing person. I'm, I'm very, I'm a better person for have known her. And I'm through. All right, thank you, Mrs. Pickens. Mr. Buckles? Well, those bus drivers are our first line of defense and eyes and ears out in the outlying areas. I just really was very interested in Nathan Eden's uh, presentation on homeless and the 588 number he had. I, I've always suspected it's probably double that in the county, but it, it's hard to it's hard to perform miracles and get into every little nook and cranny and shed and tent that you can find, whether you're in down near Whispering Pines or, or Hoodow Ridge or Unit 17 in Lock and Lake Estates. It doesn't matter. It, we've got some serious issues that we deal with each and every day, and our, our uh, people, are, it's good to know that they're out there and they're working hard to find those kids that are, are – are, hung out to dry and doing without it's and no more important than what you've seen in the hurricane and the damage in certain areas these there's people living if you go to some of the food banks and watch them pick up food on out here at hollister at the little shopping center or or one of the other areas you'll understand that there's a magnitude of problems here that not many people really envision each and every day but Beyond that, um, uh, uh, I was pleased to see the foundation come and make a presentation. I've heard more weird stuff about the foundation over the years that, that just really are just totally incorrect and untrue, but a prior board and a prior superintendent uh, was able to find a way to get back a foundation that could benefit the kids of Putnam County, and they did that and uh, we've collected, I'm, I'm sure, over 400000 dollars already to, for award ceremonies and kill awards for students. And uh, I don't have the exact figures ahead of me, but I keep hearing, you know, some of the naysayers still out there that, well, you gave this building away or it, it's, that's, that couldn't be further from the truth. We had a foundation put together back in the early 80s and it was done away with by a former superintendent and a board and it, to build a or to form a school the school didn't succeed and went under we lost the foundation another board and superintendent restored the foundation and it as gp expands as seminole expands this foundation can last in perpetuity and can not only do awards for students and award ceremonies and for teachers and certain things like that, but it can also help fund security needs in the district as well, like it does in other districts. So I'm optimistic that it is, it is gonna be a, a good investment in the years to come for, for many people. And beyond that, the Guardian program that continues to gain national uh, scrutiny and recognition, I'm sure the superintendent is probably getting a little tired of having to go around the state and, and being called to go around the nation and talk about it but that's the world we're living in uh, I can remember opening shelters back when we first started opening schools and they weren't hardened shelters but people would bring their all their firearms from home and put them on the table in the cafeteria you know you'd have five or six guns on a table I mean that was back before everything went crazy with uh, gun violence and things in our schools but you know these people they don't know if they're going home home's going to be there when they get home or not and and uh i just I, I just watch everything that has gone on in the formation of the guardian program and trying to work through the shelter situation and i just couldn't be more proud of 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 uh, of our people and somebody mentioned it a while ago you know our principals and our coaches and our administrative leaders, they figure these things out. You may give them a couple of gates or doorways that they have to man, but you know, put it up, leave it up to them and they'll figure it out and they'll, they'll make you proud of them at the same time. So, uh, Mr. Superintendent, if you'll pass that on to the staff, sure will. we're really Thank proud you, of what Brooks. they did through the storms. Thank you. And that concludes me. Thank you, Ms. Buckles. Mrs. Wagner. I just had a couple things. Um, I too wanted to say thank you to 
or district staff, I was um, I was right in the middle of some things and I, I didn't recognize the number and I had a personal call from, from someone here at the district just making sure that all the board members knew what the plan was, what was going on. And, and I said, y'all are working today? And she goes, well, not exactly. <laughs> so, you know, it, it really shows going above and beyond. And I appreciate, like we've had a conversation or two recently, how I'm particularly wanting to be in the know um, about certain, um, certain events going on in, in the community um, before things are coming to me, you know, so that I, I can respond uh, more appropriately. Um, that was very, very helpful to, to know what the district's plan was, and I just want to say I appreciate that um, while I felt for them having to uh, work during some of the, the crazy times with the, the hurricane. Um, and I did just want to say I had a, a great lunch um, experience at Aquila <coughs> about a week ago uh, where I was able to meet with um, multiple teachers and employees there, I was able to uh, observe. I love observing when people are not really aware that I'm observing. Um, I just really enjoyed seeing the kids in the in the lunchroom and seeing the interactions with some of the teachers. And I, I had one in particular, I do not remember her name, but uh, found out later she's just sort of a a, 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 a sub or a part-timer. But the, the calmness in which she was interacting with, with these children that were kind of giving her a hard time at the time, um, I, I brought it up to her and, and told her we appreciated it. Um, I had, uh, this is one of the things I've been doing, trying to go around and have lunches at the various schools and just, just to, uh, just to be there and to let um, the schools in my, my particular district at the moment, you know, give them someone to talk to if they need and, uh, and be able to meet them and meet the teachers that are in our classrooms and see what's going on, what's great, what are we doing wonderful and what, what can we be of better service to them. So I was able to uh, have some wonderful conversations with teachers and um, some of those ideas that I'm getting I'll be bringing to the board at some point. Uh, when I get a little further into it. Um, and I was so excited to get the invitation to the Crescent City function um, because I was not able to go last year. Um, and then I believe it's conflicting. I'd already RSVP'd to do something at Jenkins. Um, and so I was, I was sad that there was a conflict there, but I, um, I did apologize because I was, I was really looking forward to going to Crescent City again. I just love the drive. Um, it's quite a drive, but it's a, it's a beautiful one. I just love going down there. And uh, and that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Wagner. Mr. Leary. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I, I, too, would like to echo um, my colleagues' um, wish, good wishes and, and thankfulness for our staff and, and, and all the things that they do. And, and many times, um, you know, in situations like Dr. Cernsey was saying that, you know, kind of the last minute trying to put things together. Um, but it looks more and more like we're in this sequence of storm events on an annual basis. And I can assure you that Wednesday morning, the track showed it coming in at Tampa Bay and going directly northeast and would have come right across Palaka. Had that happened, you know, um, there would have been many people that were at the shelters. And in fact, there were in my numbers, Dr. Cernsey, not to step on maybe what you're going to talk about, but, you know, 750 people in the shelters Wednesday night, uh, which is probably one of the largest, you know, ones we've ever had in the district. Um, and, you know, some, some concerns did come back to me about, um, uh, you know, that um, Thursday morning that there was, you know, some urgency for people to pack up their stuff and, 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 and move, you know, back to their homes. And I think that, you know, almost 500 did that. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I think is important for us to, to realize and that, you know, we as a board, uh, we're not in the direct um, operations or, or, you know, on a, a basis like, you know, Dr. Cernsey and Mr. Bowling, um, but that, you know, it's important that we can help these people and treat them you know, with as much respect and dignity and understanding, which I know the staff does, 
Um, but, you know, sometimes we're put in a situation through other circumstances that, that create um, some, some confusion, I guess is the best word for it. Um, you know, we have, there's supposed to be four Red Cross representatives at each shelter. Many of the people are transported to and from the shelters um, by public transportation um, or even, you know, people volunteering to go get them and move them. Um, and so, um, as most entities do whenever they have a major event, you know, they kind of go back and look and see, you know, what, what are the good things that we did and what are some of the things that we can improve on. You know, I, I would like to see the board, Madam Chairman, you know, do, do a committee. Um, I'm happy to chair it to, to look at some of the things, you know, with the shelter operations and, and, and the coordination and then, you know, the people were there and, and that type of thing. The other thing is that um, I think there's a misnomer out there that the board can't be reimbursed for the expenditures we've, we have for uh, our employees, which is not the case. Under a federal and state uh, uh, disaster declaration, all expenses will be paid by FEMA, ultimately, either through the state to us or directly from FEMA to us. And um, so we, in, um, in fact, Jonathan was talking with, uh, with Dr. Cernsey before the meeting. Um, I think they're gonna look into that because you know, you're, you're, you're talking about a lot of money and, um, you know, two times, you know, within a, uh, a three week period, you know, having this. So, um, I'm just, you know, throwing it out as an idea to, to maybe that, that, uh, you know, we could work and, and see, you know, some of the good things that happen and some of the things that may could be improved on, not just by us, but from a communication standpoint, you know, with the other, our other partners, um, you know, other governmental agencies and, and partners. Okay. All right. And that's I saw Dr. Cernich writing yeah, it sorry, down. Yeah. So, so he's going to okay. take care that, of that. that, that right. That's it for me, Madam right. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Leary. Uh, just real quick, um, just want to give a, a thumbs up to Mrs. Drew and the therapy doll. Uh, I wrote myself a little note uh, in going through everything that is there from allergies to insurance and feeding <laughs> of the dog, uh, well, of our therapy dog. Uh, you covered all the bases and we wanna thank you for that. I know that a lot of schools are gonna benefit from it. And I like the portion that allows the principal to still decide if and, and when, and so it's great, thank you for that. Just want to commend uh, QI publicly for being designated as a, a National Blue Ribbon School, exemplary high performance school, and they will be uh, um, presented this uh, designation or distinction in Washington, D.C., November 6th through the 8th, and Dr. Serency will be going as well. And, and again, we are so proud of the efforts that they're making. And when you look at the number of schools, 356 in the nation all together were selected, and only 13 in the state of Florida, and Putnam County is one of them, mm -hmm. see? I mean, it's not the size of the dog in the fight. <laughs> the size of the fight and the dog. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, and, and you're doing great things, the leadership teams and the administration. And as Dr. Uh, Mr. Leary said, they're getting tested and hit over and over again, but they rise to the challenge. And, and, and so we just want to commend that entire staff out there and the students. Uh, also, uh, Mrs. McCool and Dr. Serency will be presenting. You know what? I've noticed as I've been going through the agenda, uh, right now, uh, Mrs. Whitehurst, she's presenting somewhere. You don't present unless you have something to present and folk want what you have. And, and this is what is happening. They are noticing what is happening in Putnam County. So in October, uh, the 28th through the 30th, Mrs. McCoo and Dr. Serency will be presenting, um, it's Chicago, right? Chicago, Illinois, on roots, on innovation and in cultivating STEM in every subject. That's power, mm -hmm. and and I know you're gonna make us proud of you. And then again, another thumbs up, or two thumbs up to Project Praise, Mr. Eddins, and the great job he's doing. Used to be a part of it way way back when um, I could see her face. 
uh, yes, Courtney, when Courtney, Courtney, mm -hmm. Courtney Carter, when she was over it and and how we were, I was involved then and kind of sort of drifted, but but energized again by his presentation and and what this means to the students in our community. And finally just a reminder of what they shared with us during all of our workshops when we were a part of SREB and um, the, the reading program that we had, successful. Uh, they would always say a portion of what we do, we can't forget to celebrate, to, to have fun, to laugh, and, and, and then after you celebrate those successes, we can move on and do other things. So, so Dr. Serency, whatever <clears throat> it takes, you know, I, I mean, I know you do it and you challenge them and you commend them for the jobs well done, but, but encourage them to celebrate more their successes and their people. Sure will. Mm -hmm. All righty. Um, Attorney Holmes. I have nothing, Madam Chair. And thank you for bringing <laughs> what you brought to us concerning the insurance. We Perfect. appreciate that. All right. Superintendent Serency. And board members, if you'll have your calendars handy just want to give you some dates that you may or may not already have and while you're doing that i just want to echo what some of you already said you know the way that our staff really responded during the uh the two hurricanes and opening the shelters and you know they they really acted like overnight to get ready and to do all that and by the way we sent our maintenance staff again for hurricane milton out to dixie county and to swanee county to help them and they started to go down to Levy County and then the National Guard came in. So uh, those superintendents reached out to me and asked if we could help and I offered the help beforehand. But again, us superintendents in our district in uh, NEFAC, we, we definitely um, try to lean on each other and they would do the same here if it was reversed. Um, we do have teachers and support related employees of the year for every school and as well as the district level. So. Uh, we're actually going to have a celebratory breakfast if you'll write this date down on october 29th at 8 a.m at the CELO cafeteria if you got you're cordially invited 8 a.m on the 29th at the CELO cafeteria everyone just attorney and board members you're welcome to attend and celebrate the, our um, honorees and then I, I just want to thank uh, all of you and all of our parents and all of our staff and students just for being flexible. I, I know Laura France presented our new <coughs> updated calendar, but they, they took a lot of time, and we've already talked about that, just to make sure we didn't take away from holiday time. But again, just adjusting the calendar, and you know that's the things we have to deal with. And uh, if you live in Florida, if you live in New York, you deal with that with snow days, you know? Yes. So it's what we uh, have to deal with. Uh, on October 24th, we have a community engagement session at Browning Pierce Elementary School beginning at 6 p.m. and that should last through 7.30. And again, that's where myself and the staff are there and we invite parents and community members as well as you to come out and just get an update on what's going on and allow them to ask questions. And I believe we have, have it, a virtual audience there as well. So. It's a great opportunity to connect with our community. Don't forget about the uh, November 5th is voting day. <coughs> the same exact day is our next board meeting. So just encourage everybody to get out and vote. It's a presidential election. I know there's some local elections as well, but um, try to vote for the board meeting if you can, <laughs> whatever works for you. Uh, this month, actually starting today through November 15th is Hispanic Heritage Month and that is um we we actually rescheduled that that was originally scheduled earlier but we had to reschedule that due to the storm and that will be on november 15th it's on a friday and it will be a celebration held in the silo auditorium and that's gotten to be a, a great celebration time you know really celebrating a very uh, large and valuable part of our community and have a lot of people turn out for that so i encourage you to come out I don't have the time in front of me right now. Uh, Ashley's not in here, but we'll get that time to you. Just if you'll put the date down. And we also, can I read this? Okay. Uh, next Wednesday, October 23rd from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. 
Rhonda Odom, as you well know, is retiring, and we're going to have a little uh, retirement celebration for her. And will that be in, in here? In here. So, uh, time again. The 11 a.m. through 2 p.m. And encourage you all to come out and celebrate Rhonda's many years of service. And finally, I know, uh, thank you for Holly for mentioning about the uh, Crescent City Veteran, Vet, uh, Veteran Ceremony. And I think, Linda, you mentioned the one at Jenkins. That's a uh, veteran ceremony as well as a dedication for Robert H. Jenkins and the naming of the school. We never have had a formal ceremony. So that will take place on the 8th of November as well. I don't have a time yet for that, but we will make sure you have that. If any of you that are available. Linda, I, th I think you said you were already committed Yes, I and think I think it's, okay. I've got it at it. Oh, actually, y'all yeah, were sent a calendar invite. Right. You're right. Yeah, by yes, the principal. Right. I think it's at 8, 815. 815, 1015, thanks. So it should be on your calendar already. Madam Chair, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Is there anything else to come before the board? Anything else for the good of the order? Hearing none.